Welcome everybody to the 2022 Equity Crowdfunding Week partnership with King's Crowd Podcast, free conference uh, webinar. Um, we have some amazing guests that'll be on this series. This is the um, Discover the Future series, and we have some amazing guests that will be with us for the next couple of days. So excited to host today um, our very own Boxwell, Galliano Terramani. Um, to talk about Boxable, to talk about the conference and talk about you guys being at the conference. And then we're joined by the um, infamous Chris Lestrino, uh, co-founder and CEO of King's Crowd. And my name is Laurel Scott. I am the co-founder co and COO of Startup Starter and the host of 2022 Equity Crowdfunding Week. Um, Galliano, how's it going, man? Hey guys, thanks for having me. I am doing great. And uh, you know, in case uh, people aren't aware, my company is called Boxable. We have a big factory here in uh, Las Vegas where we produce housing and we have a whole bunch of innovations that we think are going to allow us to mass produce housing at a faster and at a lower cost than anyone's ever done before. And, and I'm actually just sitting uh, in the office in our factory right now. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Well, we're really excited to have you, man, and, and just kind of hear this story. And Boxable has really taken off. And I mean, I, I can let Chris definitely jump in at any time. But I mean, this is kind of revolutionizing the way in the future of, of, of living. And so, you know, it's, it's remarkable what you guys have done. It's remarkable the accomplishments you guys have done. And then also the ability to really raise from the crowd through equity crowdfunding has been amazing. Um, so we, we would love to kind of like dive into that and, and, and learn a little bit more about what took you to get here and your journey that you've been on. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, back in 2017, we started working on Boxable. We went through a few years of R&D, testing, prototypes, all that, until eventually we said, we're ready with the first product to get started with. And at that time, you know, we had put in a few million dollars of our own money to get things up and running. But what we were looking to do is much bigger than that, requires much more money than that. You know, we're trying to put up billion dollar factories so we realized that we had to raise money from, from investors and at first I just didn't really have any luck with traditional investors and it was um, got a little bit frustrating and it was hard to make people really you know understand the vision and then I um, you know decided to give crowdfunding a try and, and things really took off yeah it certainly has taken off I've been uh really impressed at just the, the amount of volume of dollars that you've had for in the amount of support that you've had. Curious to hear um, of all of those investors who have joined, and I'd love if you have the exact number. I know you, I, at this point, I think it's thousands of investors who have joined this journey. Um, do a lot of them also double as customers? What does that look like? The crowdfunding really pays off big time. So, you know, usually you might, you know, for example, go to investment bank and, and pay them a percentage fee. Um, or you could do uh, crowdfunding and you know maybe you spend a little bit on, on advertising dollars. And not only does that pay off in the form of investors, but you get really everyone else. So not just customers, but uh, employees, uh, suppliers, really endless resources pouring in just because the awareness is so big. And so we realized you know, it, it ends up being a numbers game. We wanna get more and more people to find out about us and that's gonna pay off in leads. And we're gonna capture all those leads and we're gonna convert them to the various things that we need, whether it's a customer or whether it's an investor. And you know, one reason that our company has done well with crowdfunding is that the people understand our product and they, and they, and they wanna buy it and they're interested in, in the product and then they think, and they get it. And then they think, you know what, maybe I should invest in this as well. Yeah, man, literally, like when you look at it, it's like, what is there not to get, right? Like, in how, in how many minutes does it take for it to open up? Oh, so for the actual house, um, you know, deploying them is, is really quick. So we're able to uh, unfold the house and set it up in, in just a few hours. And that's even still at this early stage of the company. As we continue to refine the project product, it's going to get even easier and faster. And, it's so important to get all of the hard work out of the field and into the factory because the moment you start doing things on site, you require this high skilled labor doing, 
you know, very kind of custom jobs that end up just exploding the, the price of everything. But when you're in the factory, you can do it in a, in a standardized, repeatable manner with all the appropriate equipment. So we needed to get everything we could into the factory and remove it from the field. So our houses come complete with kitchen, uh, kitchen, kitchen cabinets, uh, uh, bathroom, plumbing, electric, windows, flooring, you know, pretty much everything that we could possibly get done in, in the factory is done beforehand. So that's going to cut out a huge amount of work out of the, the builder or developer. So I'm curious to hear, you know, you've created this innovation, you've obviously gotten a lot of press about it and obviously sold a lot of securities into your company and have gotten a lot of interest in people actually purchasing the homes. How many homes have you been able to install and what does that look like over the next year or two? I think we've produced about 250 houses now. The factory has been online for just about a year. Uh, the initial order we got was from the Department of Defense for military base housing. So when we got that order, we didn't have anything. We didn't have a factory, we didn't have employees or, or anything at all. So we basically got in and you know ran as, as fast as we could to uh, get things up and running and managed to, to pull it off. And we completed that order and now we're moving on to, to other customers. So we've got a bunch of new customers now and um, we're, next step for us before we really ramp up the production volume is to perfect the uh, manufacturing methods and get into the next gen of the product. So we're actually just about to do about $15 million in equipment upgrades in the factory here that's going to really take things to the next level because you know, as we were starting up, everything was new, the manufacturing equipment was experimental, the, the product um, the product, building materials were experimental, kind of doing everything for the first time. We wanted to keep it as, as manual as we could. And now that we've figured out, all right, certain things are gonna stay this way, um, then we have to go ahead now and start investing in that in that automation and, and you know, locking things in. And even what we're doing now is, is still only the beginning. And the scale that we think this justifies um, is, is going to be massive. So I think of this first factory just kind of as still as a proof of concept. Nice, man. I, I, and you guys have like a, a, a total mission behind this, right? And like that drives you guys to be able to make these changes, to make it bigger, um, to grow faster. One of the questions I had in mind was when you look at where Voxable is going, right? How do you feel like this is revolutionizing the way we look at housing and the way that we look at um, living in, in homes versus going and buying this huge property or buying land when you could just drop a boxable and, and go in a couple hours. Yeah, I mean, that's really kind of one part of what we're doing, but the Casita project is really just a, a starting point for the company. So we do have a building system here where we will be able to build all different building types by stacking connecting rooms that we build with that are different sizes with different interiors so in the future ideally we'll have you know maybe three or four size rooms uh, one will be a, a kitchen box one will be a bedroom box one will be a living room box in you know, a bunch of different um, configurations and then we can stack and connect those to create kind of endless configurations of, of housing so it's just a huge world of, of opportunity and, and use cases but even starting out with this little casita product has really changed the way people think about things. Uh, of course, it's kind of the minimum viable housing unit size you could have, and itself has a whole bunch of different use cases. And you know, it is um, intended to be a permanent home, but just by its nature, it's you know relocatable and and can be can be temporary. And um, people have gone gone crazy for it, and they've really fallen in love with it. We never expected to get so much interest. I thought we'd sell. You know, a few hundred. Now we have a wait list that's got over 100, 140,000 names on it. Holy cow! So, yeah, what do you think it is that has led to your story just resonating so well, both with having 140,000 people want to buy the home, but also from the fact that so many people have actually wanted to invest in your business? You know, I think it's a, a combination of things, and of course, it's snowballed as we've gone forward. So, um, initially, people saw this unfolding house video and thought well that's cool and they were interested in it and uh, so that that got some people uh, a lot of people see this small house and it's kind of uh, attainable for them um, as they continue to look into things they see that we've also been 
kind of delivering on our promises. You know, we've come a long way really quickly, done everything we said we were going to do, scaled up uh, and, and executed. So I think that gives people even more assurance and they get further committed. And then, of course, once they really dive in, they kind of start to understand the long term vision and just how, how big this is. And, you know, that vision is that all the other modern products are built on an assembly line using mass production. As a result, they are high quality and ultra low cost. There's one big industry that has not transitioned in the factory and that's housing. So it just represents a, an absolutely massive opportunity to just use all this existing mass production technology and apply that to housing. You know, you have the best example of, of modern mass production is automobiles. You have these huge factories that are insanely big where they put out one car per minute. If we could just do that with housing, we would have such a big impact on, on the world and, and on the economics behind housing. And uh, it, it looks pretty promising with Boxable now that, that we're going to make it there. Yeah, man, when you talk about like all those different things, right, it makes me, it makes me think like, what does this also hold for the future of investment into equity crowdfunding, into businesses like this? And and when you talk about impact, right? So I, I'm curious to know, like, what do you think the impact from all the successes you've had, what do you think the impact of online invest, investing will be over the next 10 years? Well, you know, it's definitely pretty cool, you know, that they've changed these laws to open this up. And I think, you know, it, it, it makes sense. It, it should be that way. You know, the, the SEC is out there with this mandate to protect investors and protect consumers, but it doesn't really add up because you can't protect people fr from everything. You can't call everyone stupid and say, you're not smart enough to figure out what you can invest in. You know, they're still letting them buy lottery tickets. They're still letting them uh, go to the casino. I could still spend my whole paycheck on um, jet skis, or I could eat, you know, 100 McDonald's cheeseburgers in a day. You can't just micromanage everyone to the point and say, you're so stupid, you don't know what to invest in. You're going to get tricked if we, if we open it up. So it's good that they're slowly opening it up and letting people decide if, if they want to invest in, you know, earlier stage private companies. And hopefully we can be a great example of, of how that works out well for everyone uh, in the end. And, you know, of course, Boxable, you know, we do plan to eventually IPO in the stock market when we feel that that's the appropriate timing. Um, hopefully that's rapidly approaching as, as we get geared up to get into this next factory. And believe when everyone looks back at what we've done, they're going to say, wow, you know, these guys did some things a little differently, but it really worked out well. And they were able to achieve something that was a game changer for um, you know, this this product and building construction and proved how amazing equity crowdfunding could be. So tell me, do you think there's anything from your experience, you talked a little bit about regulatory stuff, either from regulatory or just from messaging or just from general adoption, is there anything that you think can be done to help really bring the equity crowdfunding industry into more of the mainstream, you know, like the crypto world and whatnot that just hasn't happened just yet? As it gets out there and more people find out about it, um, and we hear more, you know, success stories. I think, you know, that will help recruit other people. But it's pretty tricky. You know, there's a lot of regulations and, and rules and nuances, and it does cost a lot of money. It needs to be spent on lawyers. Uh, frankly, I'm I'm even scared to do interviews like this because I'm scared I'm going to say the wrong thing, and the SEC is going to have something to say about it, or we're not going to have the right disclaimer. Uh, originally, when we set out to do this Reg A offering, it actually took us uh, o almost 18 months to get that qualified with the SEC. Uh, and, and it wasn't really that we did anything wrong. We were just, our company was moving so fast. By the time we would update the SEC with the, the new happenings of the company, they would wait a month and ask another question about it. And then we would have to be stuck in this cycle of, updating them and waiting for their comments and really it was um, it was it was torturous for us um, but you know obviously it worked out well well in the end and um, you know we're gonna keep running with with equity crowdfunding in whatever way we can what's really crazy is like the rapid growth that you've had through raising through equity crowdfunding has been like tremendously amazing it's like it, I feel like you like 
are breaking records through this, right? Uh, and I'm curious to know, like through the process of raising and through the different rounds that you guys have done and, and, and continue to do, what do you think is attributed to the success, particularly of raising equity crowdfunding? Yeah, you know, I think uh, we have kind of set a few records uh, with this. It's pretty cool. And at the end of the day, I realized that, you know, of course you have to have a good good product and a good company and all that, but you're not going to be success successful unless you're able to, to market and sell. So we did that through views. Basically, you know, get as many views as you can, get as many people aware of what you're doing and do whatever you have to do to make that happen and then try to capture those leads and then come back and remarket to those leads and, and convert them. So, you know, for example, we just went out with a YouTube video today that I think is pretty funny and, and it also shows how strong our houses are and that's gonna get us a certain amount of people finding out about the company and a certain percentage of those people are gonna invest in the company or become customers of the company and you know, it, it pays off dividends in every area to just have more awareness of, of what you're doing, uh, especially if you have a product that a lot of people can understand and a lot of people might be interested in. Yeah. <laughs> Does this involve a so, car? Yeah, yeah. So if you want to go check out our YouTube channel, um, we basically stacked a bunch of cars on top of the roof of the house to show how strong it was and then started dropping the car. Uh, on the roof and eventually smashed through the roof of the of the of the house um, and then there's a skit in there where I go to enterprise rent a car and try to rent a car from them to destroy and uh, uh, hopefully people like it <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool so I mean at the end of the day right this is an investment um, and people are getting involved in backing your company because they believe in the in the future vision of the company so you have over 100,000 people kind of on this wait list that are interested in potentially becoming customers. Um, so what are you doing to eventually be able to fulfill all of those orders in the years to come? Yeah, so we got in here you know, a year ago, turned on this first factory. Um, we've now grabbed a second building. Uh, so that's gonna bring us up from 170,000 square feet to 300,000 square feet of manufacturing space. We're really just perfecting the formula here and then we're looking to make the case for a much bigger scale. So in the background, I'm, I'm making the pitch for, give me a billion dollar factory, give me a billion dollars to build a factory next. And I think it's gonna happen, and I think we'll end up with a really monster campus down the street here, where we get to the scale of the automobile makers, and we can put out, hopefully in the future, someday, uh, one house per minute. And uh, you know, we're, we're just here, proving it out, figuring out the basics, and, you know, if we can prove the demand for our product, which I think we have, you know, someone's going to step up and give us the resources, uh, or maybe I'll just crowdfund all the money. Um, I I, uh, I think it might be possible. Actually, I'm going to try to do that. You have a strong point. I mean, the success from crowdfunding through building your company up here has been like, man, just to think of the things that you can do within raising capital through these means that a lot of people are not even aware of or even know that they have access to, right? So I'm curious to know, like, of all the ways that you could have raised capital, um, you could have went through venture and, and all these different means, why equity crowdfunding for you guys? For me personally, I, I tried a bunch of stuff and this just worked the best. But looking back, um, it, it really was the best outcome we could have got. For example, we got offers from like, venture capital come in and be investors, but they wanted to take control of the whole company. And that wouldn't be a great position to be in now if we had lost a huge chunk of the company and not be able to control the vision because we're the guys that have to be in charge of this for now to be able to you know, uh, make it happen and, and execute on the vision. And um, having you know, sold off if we had sold off a bulk of the company and control to, to someone else's vision, I don't think it would have you know, come to fruition and I don't think it would have continued to come to fruition. So um, we're in this amazing position now where we are controlling the, the direction and vision for the company and, and uh, we're really you know, taking advantage of using the best uh, strategies to, to get the company the resources it needs. So if people want to get involved, where can they go and invest right now in the business? So right now, uh, the investment offering is just open to accredited investors. 
um, so they can head over to the website and uh, learn more about that on the on, on our website at boxable.com b-o-x-a-b-l.com nice cool man well you know we have boxable coming to equity crowdfunding week right this is almost one of the first times that a large crowd actually gets to see it in person and and people that may have invested in your business or people that may want to invest in your business are able to actually come see firsthand how it's built how it's structured what it looks like on the inside at equity crowdfunding week um we're really excited to have you guys um we created an entire neighborhood around boxable um and so all, everyone should be there to experience this um, firsthand um there's a huge thing that we're trying to do here. Our mission is to democratize entrepreneurship and create more capital for founders, for startups. And we believe that equity crowdfunding is the way, but we have to really flip it on, on its head to let people know that equity crowdfunding is available to them and provide access around it, right? I think that the only way that we can do that is touching the mainstream and getting to the masses to let them know that they don't only have to invest in what they're told to invest in, but now they have the opportunity because this act was passed um, to be able to invest in the things that they believe in, which is why this whole model around discover the future is a, is a big thing for us because it's not just the future of raising capital, it's the future of people's li livelihoods, the future of industries because anyone can raise equity crowdfunding and anyone can invest in equity crowdfunding if they're 18 years of age or older, can invest in equity crowdfunding with as little as $100. And there's so many different offerings out there that they have access to and really cool companies from minority founders to tech companies, blockchain, food, beverage, everything you can think of it, um, it you can raise equity crowdfunding for it. But in the meantime, you can come check out all of the companies that are going to be in equity crowdfunding, including Boxable, um, and check out equity crowdfunding here coming up in November, November 9th through the 11th, um, startupstarter.co slash ECW if you want to register and you can view it online for free. So check it out. Yeah, please come check out the casita, which we'll have there in, in person. And uh, of course, I urge any founders who need to raise money for a company to learn about crowdfunding and why it's probably the best route for you.